Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to learn about starter cultures for cheese making. Well, you've probably realised by watching lots of my cheese making videos that I use different types of starter cultures for different types of cheese. And they all have their purpose. Now today we're just going to be covering starter cultures only uh, and I'll leave moulds, penicillium family and stuff like that in a different video. Anyway, let's get on and uh, learn a little bit about starter cultures. So first up we have the mesophilic culture and these tend to be lower temperature cheeses. So the two strains that we're mainly concerned with are the Lactococcus lactus subspecies Cremorus and Lactococcus lactus subspecies lactus. Now these are moderate to high acidifiers with no gas or diacetyl production. They have a clean flavour, they're very closed textured cheeses and proteolytic during ageing. I'll explain that at the end. Now they're used for cheddars, Monterey Jack, Stilton, Edam, Gouda, Munster, blue cheeses, cream cheeses if you want a sharp one. Uh, Sherv and Colby, but that's not the end of the list. There are quite a few more cheeses that you can make with these types of mesophilic cultures. So types of cultures or examples, uh, MO30 by Sacco, MA11 by Denisco Choose It, uh, Type 3 by Abiasa, uh, C101 by New England Cheese Making Supply. So that brings us on to aromatic mesophilic cultures, which differ slightly to the normal mesophilic culture. So some of the cultures you'll find, Lactococcus lactus subspecies lactus, Lactococcus lactus subspecies cremorus, and sometimes selected strains of Lactococcus lactus subspecies lactus biovar, diacetylite lactus, and Lucono stock. Lucono stock. So you'll find that cheeses, uh, these are moderate acidifiers with some gas or some CO2 production and high diacetyl production. Uh, now they're used mainly for cheeses like Havarti, Camembert, Brie. Um, not so tangy cream cheese, uh, creme fraiche, cottage cheeses, fromage blanc, uh, sherve, bloomy goat, valence, uh, cultured butter. So anything that needs a, a buttery aroma or buttery feel in the mouth. So some examples, uh, MO36R by Sacco, Flora Danica by CHR Hansen, uh, Aroma Type B1 by Abiasa, and Mad Millie also make a version of aromatic mesophilic culture. And that's a lovely Havarti I'm showing there. So the next one is thermophilic cultures. Now, thermophilic cultures are heat loving cultures. So they usually have uh, Lactococcus lactus subspecies lactus, Lactobacillus helveticus, Lactobacillus delbrucki, a subspecies bulgaris, and Streptococcus thermophilus. So these combined usually add some interesting flavours to harder cheeses. So the typical properties are they moderate acidifiers, sometimes there are high acidifier ones, which result in higher proteolytic activity and a slightly creamy texture. They use thermophilic cultures to produce cheeses like mozzarella, 
Parmesan, Provolone, Swiss, Gruyere, and other types of Italian and Swiss style or Alpine style cheeses. So some examples of this um, that I use anyway are MOT 92 by Sacco, uh, TA60 plus LH100 by Danisco Choose It, and Thermo Type B or C uh, by Abiasa. Now there are also quite a few strains by other manufacturers uh, for thermophilic cultures. So they're just some examples. Now onto temperature ranges of the two types of starter cultures. So mesophilic has a temperature range or an activity range between 25 to 33 Celsius, which is 77 to 91 Fahrenheit. Uh, thermophilic cultures tend to have an activity range between 35 to 41 Celsius, or which is 95 to 105 Fahrenheit. Usually if the temperatures are over that, they die off. So just to finish off, there's a couple more properties that all starter cultures have. Now they are all acidifiers. Now they may be moderate or they may be low, moderate or high acidifiers and it depends on the strain of culture. There's two other properties that, are, that you need to know about when it comes to starter cultures and you'll see those on the culture specifications that usually either come with a packet or that you can find uh, on the cultures website. So they are uh, proteolytic now, proteolytic means protein degrading, uh, and they're a proteolytic enzyme uh, within the culture, and they contribute to the development of desirable flavors and textures in virtually all aged cheeses. So they break down the proteins as they age. So that's how you aged cheeses get their flavor. And the other one is diacetyl. Now, diacetyl is a fermentation compound which contributes to a desirable buttery aroma and mouthfeel uh, to a cheese. Now, now cheeses that have this diacetyl um, or, or buttery aroma are things like Havati. Um, most of the cheeses that use um, an aromatic mesophilic culture will have this type of a feel to the mouth. So very important when selecting which type of mesophilic culture that you want to use. Also, some thermophilics have a, a diacetyl um, action within the, uh, the aging of the cheese. Now, if you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe to get other cheesy videos like this one. Also, check out some of our other cheese making video tutorials. And don't forget you can buy supplies and all of these cultures that have been mentioned in this video over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.